For some reason, Scandinavia is not its frigid self, with unusually warm weather delaying the onset of winter in northern latitudes normally decked in white. There are even reports of bird song and blooming gardens in some places typically entering the winter freeze at this time of year. Some flowers, like roses, have actually begun to blossom for a second time, said Mats Rosenberg, a biologist in Arebro, south-central Sweden. The UK was suddenly hit by freak weather, cloudbursts, freakish floods and even tornadoes. Deluges forced roads to close, trees toppled, freakish circumstances brought water pouring into streets, flooding shops and businesses, and the list goes on. Holidaymakers ran for shelter as a twister hit the Sandy Beach Caravan Park in Anglesey, destroying six caravans and leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Flooding and high winds also lashed nearby villages, and what the Met Office confirmed was some of the worst weather in the country. It happened around 8.45 p.m. Eastern Time Tuesday evening on 29 November 2011. Residents tell News Channel 7 they heard the loud boom then felt a vibration. Gulf County Sheriff's dispatchers say they received a number of calls about it. They say they contacted Tyndall Air Force Base to find out if a jet broke the sound barrier, but Tyndall officials said it wasn't one of their aircraft. There are no reports of any explosions or earthquakes. So for now, the source of the loud boom remains a mystery. Mysterious bird flu-like virus is being alleged to have killed between 500 and 1,000 crows in Jamshedpur, Bukharo. Worms have survived their first space mission in liquid form. The result, published in a Royal Society journal, means worm colonies can be established on space stations without the need for researchers to tend to them. France's highest administrative body overturned two Ministry of Agriculture rulings on Monday banning the planting of genetically modified corn. Two government ministries quickly said they were looking for ways to continue blocking the crop. In a release from the Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management, Governor Mary Fallon said Wednesday she is disappointed and frustrated that the White House has denied Oklahoma's request for individual assistance for those hit by a series of earthquakes earlier this month. A four-block-wide sinkhole in South Carolina has caused buildings to fall and pavements to crack. Allegedly, 14 claims from business owners have been filed with the Department of Transportation. The arrival of seven and a half tons of tear gas to Egypt's Suez port created conflict after the responsible officials at the port refused to sign and accept it for fear it would be used to crack down on Egyptian protesters. Despite warnings from Inspector, one Iowa town still battles toxic air. CPI reports, the polluter is one of the nation's biggest emitters of acetaldehyde, a probable carcinogen, and Iowa's largest emitter of lead last year. Do not be deceived, S. 1867 is the most dangerous bill since the Patriot Act. In a speech at MIT, Mayor Bloomberg said, I have my own army in the NYPD, which is the seventh biggest army in the world. I have my own State Department, much to Foggy Bottom's annoyance. We have the United Nations in New York, and so we have an entree into the diplomatic world that Washington does not have. Earth tremors in the strangest of places as a rare seismic earth tremor is felt in southeast Finland of all places. In a weird twist, now, in an update, one lone man is being charged in a massive spill of a 500 to 800 gallon pool of petroleum like, viscous black fluid found near a Pennsylvania natural gas well pad. He is laughably charged with scattering rubbish. Like as if we need this. A fracking oil boom puts strain on North Dakota towns. A rare violent wind storm leads path of destruction, leaving L.A. County in a state of emergency. A bill to let U.S. spy agencies share intelligence on cyber threats with private companies was backed by a House of Representatives intelligence panel on Thursday. The Whitechapel United Methodist Church in South Lake, Texas, 
is featuring a nightly 3D Christmas display projected upon a building, and it is so very lifelike, but certainly tame to what truly can displayed with some of the no doubt hidden advanced technology purposefully not out there, today. Oh, and by the way, we do not like the new look of YouTube. Should the state of Michigan step in to run Detroit? The governor has taken steps in the direction, proposing an unprecedented move that could give an appointed manager virtually unchecked power to gut union contracts, cut health insurance and slash services. But city leaders bristle at the notion. Said the mayor, this is our city. Detroit needs to be run by Detroiters. The blistering winds that ripped through Southern California on Wednesday reached speeds so high that they could not be accurately recorded at the peak of Mammoth Mountain, according to a park spokesperson who estimated winds gusted up to 170 miles per hour. Scientists say they are trying to help New Mexico's famous chili crop by genetically modifying it. What do you think? Would it even be a chili afterward? Released from jail, protester exposes LAPD's appalling treatment of detained Occupy protesters. A new quantum nanoscience lab that opened in Sydney last week aims to understand the physical limits of quantum weirdness. An unusual gamma ray burst exploded into life on Christmas Day last year and two teams of astronomers have offered different explanations for what caused it. One theory involves a kamikaze comet. The other involves an exotic star merger. NASA will reveal new discoveries made by its planet-hunting Kepler Space Telescope on Monday, according to a recent agency announcement. Mud Volcano in Pingtung County, Taiwan erupted early Friday spilling mud flows of up to two meters high. To add to the growing list of record-breaking events, SeaTac Airport in Seattle, Washington recorded the highest atmospheric pressure reading ever on November 28, 2011. Albino baby dolphin photographed off Brazilian coast becomes the first recorded of its species. It is looking increasingly grim for Russia's Mars mission Phobos Grunt which has been stuck circling the Earth since its launch in early November. The European Space Agency announced on Friday that it was now ceasing any further attempts to get a signal. New York and Mayor Bloomberg get friendly with Facebook, and opens engineering office. A federal court judge issued a temporary restraining order Friday allowing Occupy OKC protesters to remain in downtown Kerr Park despite the objections of city officials. Environmental Commissioner of Ontario warns of chronic underfunding to Great Lakes and risks of fracking. Los Angeles police used nearly a dozen undercover detectives to infiltrate the Occupy LA encampment before this week's raid to gather information on protesters, according to media reports Friday. Heavy cloudbursts caused three sewer overflows last week in Baltimore the largest overflow being upward of 110,000 gallons. Two small quakes rumble in Oklahoma. The U.S. Geological Survey says both earthquakes were centered in Lincoln County and recorded between 10.42 p.m. and 11.05 p.m. Friday. Years later, FEMA allocates $30 million for Hurricane Katrina road repairs. Iranian authorities ban Battlefield 3 video game because of scene in which U.S. aircraft launches an assault on Tehran. Swiss government declares downloading for personal use legal. Research says piracy not as harmful as industry claims. Same storm that brought destructive winds to the west is moving through the Rockies and into the Plains states this weekend. Built entirely from recycled shipping containers, London's latest retail park is not your average shopping experience. Box Park opened in East London today and claims to be the world's first ever pop-up shopping center. 
The House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee will hold a hearing Wednesday 10 a.m. on legislation that would earmark 80% of Clean Water Act fines, related to last year's BP oil spill, to the five Gulf states impacted by the accident. A small earthquake was reported in central Montana on Thursday. Montana is no stranger to seismic activity, but the majority of it occurs in southwest and western Montana. Also, a small earthquake struck northwest Georgia the morning of December 4, according to the Southeast U.S. Seismic Network. It is the fourth earthquake to strike that region of northwest Georgia since November 9. Bomb squads in Germany successfully defused on Sunday two bombs and disposed of an additional airdrop military device that had caused an evacuation of historic proportions in a city in the country's west. The U.S. Postal Service is pushing ahead with unprecedented cuts to first-class mail next spring that will slow delivery and, for the first time in 40 years, eliminate the chance for stamped letters to arrive the next day. Wondery Los Angelenos will get a brief reprieve Sunday but can brace for a couple more days of strong gusts up until Tuesday afternoon, the National Weather Service said, while more than 55,000 customers who lost power during last week's harsh weather remained without electricity. The town of Nome in Alaska, after snow came conditions, is now surrounded by about a foot thick ice and the fuel barge cannot make it into port. It is being said that gas price could rise to $9 a gallon. Mount Gamalama in Indonesia's North Maluku province erupted on Sunday, December 4, releasing volcanic ashes. People living around the foot of the volcano have taken refuge to safer places. Mount Gamalama in Indonesia's North Maluku province erupted on Sunday, December 4, releasing volcanic ashes. People living around the foot of the volcano have taken refuge in safer places. Residents of Paparo are living on the edge as the mud volcano that ravaged the village 14 years ago has begun to threaten their community again. At the site off Old Paparo Road yesterday, two new mounds had surfaced, spewing mud several feet into the air at five-minute intervals. Iranian media reported on Sunday that their country's military had shot down a U.S. reconnaissance drone in eastern Iran, but a U.S. official said there was no indication the aircraft had been shot down.